Hello there, Geminis. Um, I have four messages here that I'm going to relay, and then we'll go into, we'll delve into each of these messages a little bit deeper, okay? So the theme for this month, the first one is, um, they're saying here, a career comeback, and a re-emerging of a career path, or something coming back from the past that you're going to revisit, you're going to re-entertain, and you're going to pursue again, okay? So it looks really positive, actually. The second message here, I have a flashback to more money, more problems. Um, I can't remember which month in the past that I, um, where I got this message, but I remember it being back in 2017, and I feel like it might have been um, June or September um, where this message came in for you guys. So I'm having that same energy coming back. So it's a flashback from more money, more problems. So I feel like financially you're quite prosperous, but you're trying to figure out, um, how to allocate. You're trying to figure out how to budget. You're trying to figure out how to work within the confines of the existing financial constraints even. But I do feel there are issues here that we need to revisit. There are things here that we need to be, uh, I want to say, to face head on, to not shy away from, to not procrastinate on your financial planning, okay? The third message, um, they're saying here, creating a brand, branding, creating something where I physically feel like you're putting your name on a product. You're endorsing a product, putting your name on a product, advocating for a product, and trying different things in order to perfect and make this product very personalized so that it's like a representation of you and then you bring this product out into the world to sell so i see many of you physically doing it with your hands others working with software to create labels for the product and then other people convening or um meeting with a consultants or people in their the the industry in order to market the product okay and brand the product and the fourth message it seems really really good um, the only thing here I have is generous lover. So best for last. We're going to save that, you know, for last. And let me talk a little bit more and expand upon some of these messages that are coming in. So Gemini, uh, overall, I feel like this is a little bit of a, it's a good month, love relationships and things like that. But I feel like finances, you really need to get a grip on things, okay? Um, let me talk first of all, the career comeback. So many of you have been working very, very diligently, and I feel for the past five months, you're coming to work, you're coming home, and um, I feel like, you know, you're working out of necessity because, you know, don't we all? We all have to work out of necessity. For some of you, it's like you're getting into a job mainly because you needed that financial stability very quickly. Uh, it could be for some of you, you're supporting children. And uh, you found yourself like scrambling to settle into a job, just any job, because you have people dependent on you. And then for others of you, it was like a career progression. But you're trying to figure out like, where am I headed now? Am I happy? Is this where ultimately I can stay for a long time? And you're starting to see kind of like the end of that tunnel. You're starting to feel like maybe this is a dead end career path or maybe the contract is up or maybe the gig is up or maybe, you know, this is not where I'm meant to be long term. So some of you are putting out your resumes or thinking about and I feel from the month of August into October, there's going to be a shift in your career, in, in your work situation, okay? And while you're doing that, while you're anticipating or waiting on this next shift, some of you are thinking about taking on, you know, additional work on the side or revisiting a job situation that you have turned down or you stopped doing at a prior or at a previous time. So, I feel like for some of you, the job deals a lot with the service industry. It deals a lot with foreigners. It deals a lot with foreign communication. It deals as well a lot with sponsoring, advertising, marketing, and travel. And I feel like for whatever reason, you had to turn down this job because of family obligations, you know, children and things like that. So now you're uh, contemplating, you're revisiting it, and um, there is kind of like... Um, there's an opportunity for you to come back to this, okay? 
I also feel reinventing yourself, dressing a little bit sharper, communicating in a way that um, allows you to see how worldly you are, how well-traveled you are, and kind of not being afraid to uh, brag about your skills a little bit, um, to sell yourself, you know, like to um, hype up your skills is what I'm seeing. And I also feel returning with new ideas, new projects, and possibly even a new location that's going to be coming in. I feel this um, energy coming in very, very, very strongly from the August time frame until October. Okay, this new opportunity, new moves, new uh, revisiting something, revisiting something or starting something like, for example, if you were a teacher and then now you're like an administrator, some of you might be returning to that teaching job, okay, in a different location even. And then for some of you, if you were an entertainer and then now you're like working a regular nine to five job in an office, you're contemplating, maybe I should return to entertainment, okay? And by entertainment, um, it can go many ways. I do see as well, like modeling, acting. I also feel as well, um, some of you who might have like, um, w who were in school, and now you're modeling and you're, you know, in the entertainment industry, possibly the reversal of that is going back to school. So you're revisiting some things. I definitely feel school is very possible for many of you as well. Okay. Um, so that's going to provide kind of the stability you need while you're pursuing your side gigs. Okay. Many of you have many, many side gigs. Gemini's are extremely versatile and really fun, mainly because you're good at many, many, many things. And you need to have, you know, at least two jobs to keep your mind engaged and to keep you uh, to keep you entertained, to keep you interested, because, you know, idle hands are the devil's playground for you guys. That is the ultimate worst case scenario for an air sign, in particular, uh, a Gemini to be bored. When you're bored in relationships, even at work, you find things to do that might not be good for you. And then you also, you, you can get into a rut where you self-sabotage, okay? You can self-sabotage a good relationship or a good job just because you're not stimulated enough, just because you're bored. So keep yourself um, active. Keep, you know, t take on a new job. You might not need the money, but you need that stimulation, okay? Um, the second message, let's dive a little bit deeper into that. So there is um, the message that I'm getting here. It says flashback to more money, more problems. I'm seeing some of you waving your hands. It's like magic. You wave your hands and money appears. You put your name on something and then money appears. So it's like you're very, very, you were going through a very prosperous time where money was, you know, coming in abundantly. And I feel in particular uh, Gemini rising and then Gemini uh, sun, okay, in particular. And so you wave your money, you wave your hand and the money just comes in. Um, so the message here is, you know, the last time that this happened, right? The last time this, th that this happened, it was a major lesson for you. And, uh, it, it was teaching you whatever comes in really fast is going to leave very, very quickly as well. Whatever takes its time to grow to, to kind of, um, requires a little bit more nurturing, more patience, more engagement from your end those are the things that last a little bit longer okay and i feel like this is a metaphor for life you know um it comes in fast it's gonna leave fast okay and this is, extends across relationships as well so i feel like you're having an opportunity here to learn this lesson so if it was not learned before it's coming back in again so you're gonna need to really really tell yourself you know um I feel like to to learn these lessons first of all regarding money okay and in astrology the house of money is a second house and it's also the values house so when I talk about money I can't help but you know relate it to values what do we really value and how is it that we can value certain things mainly because they're exciting they're fun they're dynamic and that was like, I, I feel like you guys need so much stimulation that for you, 
that is preferable. The things that come in fast and burn out fast. Even though you know that it's going to burn out fast, you're in it for the ride because it's exciting, right? It's thrilling and uh, it's fun. Even though you know there is an expiration date, you still do it. You still engage in it and you still, you know, uh, accept it because even if you know there's an expiration date because it's fun. So my advice here is to really think about, you know, these things that we're engaging in and whether or not they are healthy, whether or not they're meaningful and whether or not they're really helping us grow as a human being. Because if we have like, you know, four or five same opportunities presented to us over and over and over again, it basically means that we're not really learning that lesson and we need to grow and evolve as a human being, as a person, and learn our spiritual lessons so that they don't repeat, but so that they can make us a little bit more grounded, a little bit more mature, a little bit more in alignment with things that are better for us, okay? So it boils down to having a, a sense of, you know, longer term planning, thinking about longer term and honestly, telling yourself, I'm not a kid anymore. You know, some of you are just like in your 30s, in your 40s, trying to find a career path, having a lot of skills under your belt and shifting through many, many, many different jobs, you know, staying at one job like nine months and another job three months and then another job like five months. You're learning all of these skills, but you find yourself and you're, you're good at it, what you do. Don't get me wrong, but you find yourself understimulated and you find yourself bored and you find yourself too unfulfilled. And so the advice is if you're constantly bouncing from place to place, if you're constantly looking for that rush, if you're constantly looking for that new fast um, and very dynamic entry into your life, you, you know it's going to burn out fast. So I feel like many of you, it's time to think about um, a career path. It's time for you to really settle down and, you know, um, think about like, where can I be happy five years time and then work towards it. Okay. And I know that many of you, just the concept of, you know, long-term planning, it's boring. It's, it's dull. It's, restricting but this is something that you're going to have to do because i feel that concept of the clock ticking you know time is catching up to us we're no longer a child we're no, no longer a teenager we're no longer in our 20s we're no longer in our 30s whatever your situation is you're starting to feel that and for air signs in general every time a mercury retrograde period comes around it reminds air signs of their mortality. The clock is ticking, right? We're experiencing another cycle that's forcing us to examine or revisit or re-examine these things that make us feel really uncomfortable, things that make us feel very human, things that make us feel like we're not exempt from these laws of the universe. We're not exempt from having to do a regular boring nine to five. We're not exempt from these rules that apply to all the other signs, even though you feel like you might be exempt, but we're not exempt. So this is the month for us to kind of draw back and really think about, um, really think about our values, really think about, you know, at the end of our lives, we want to build up a legacy. We want to have something to show for ourselves. We want to create something of greatness, something of value that can be true, enduring, and everlasting. And I feel like you want to leave your mark in the world, right? So let's start first with our financial foundation. Let's start first with getting ourselves to a space where we are self-sufficient, where we have money for a rainy day where we are generating and building wealth so that we can start to take care of ourselves, take care of the people that we love and still have money left over for that crisis, for that emergency, for unforeseen circumstances. So financial planning, talk to an advisor, talk to somebody that can make money work for you because I feel like this might not be your forte. Some of you are great business people, but when it comes to the accounting aspect, you're, you're good at businesses, 
uh, or expanding a business because your ability to market yourself, to sell, to make connections, to um, know what's you know what what's um, what's in style, what's um, what's in vogue, like what's what people are after. But in terms of like the the accounting aspect of it, it might not be your forte. So talk to somebody, hire somebody, uh, look into where you can diversify a little bit. Okay, that's going to be crucial. Look into saving money, investing money. Don't spend it because I see large quantities coming in and then it just like quickly slips through your fingers. Okay, um, so be careful a little bit about that. I see some overturning of financial ledgers. So it's like mistakes or something like that, okay, as well. So you want to be careful. If you are, well, if you're in the United States and you're filing for taxes this month, make sure you have somebody uh, look it over for you because I see like mistakes, okay? And I'm also seeing if you're filing jointly, be very careful. If you're like separated, if you're in like a, a confusing relationship, if you have dependents and you're filing there, you need to make sure everybody's on the same page. Everyone is filing the way they're supposed to, because, you know, if you're separated and you're like, OK, I'm going to file um, separately. And then your spouse that you're separated from but not divorced from might be filing jointly. So make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, the other message that's coming in here the third message is creating a brand branding um, and this is a really really good idea I feel like some of you are talking to somebody um, like a, an advertiser a marketer or somebody who is telling you you know we like what you're doing can you vouch for our product can you be our sponsor can we pay you to show this product can we pay you to be the face of this product and then for others you're creating a brand you're like um, marketing things you're putting your name on labels i see a lot of labels i see handbags i see labels perfume bottles as well as like book signing as well so it looks really uh, promising, like you're putting your, yourself out there and other people are just like lapping up these services or these things that you're offering, these merchandise that you're offering. Uh, once again, you know, like more money, more problems, whatever is coming in really, really fast. You need to have everything documented so that you can for financial reporting purposes. OK, so just, you know, have an Excel spreadsheet, do it in a very um, informal way so that you at least have it mapped out or you're able to track it. OK. Um, it says here tapping into a niche market. So having a specific demographic group that is very interested in you. So it's like you're trying to expand beyond that. So you're trying to expand from the local to the global. So possibly your localized, you have a very niche type, um, client base, and now you're trying to expand outwards and it's going to be very, very successful. Um, once again, do not expand too fast because I feel like for many of you, it's a one man, one woman operation. And um, unless you hire on more people, you're not going to be able to scale up in the manner that you're hoping okay so scaling up slowly with the proper manpower is required so don't expand too fast um, upping your audience uh, selling things with your name on it so I feel like brand recognition is really 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 good um, so they're saying I feel like some of you have already tried this um, 2015 is what I'm sensing and then 2016 okay so you tried it in 2015 something didn't pan out the way you hope 2016 there was like a collaborator or somebody coming in to help you and then now you're ready now you're ready to finally launch it so you still have that fear of failure back in 2015 but now you're on a different path uh, now you have more experience. Now you have that lesson learned or learning from the past. So it's going to work out really well this time. Last message, Gemini. So we're saving the best for last here. You've got a generous lover in your relationship sector. We have here the King of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles is somebody who is, you know, um, Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising, or they're heavily seen as this person. This is a really extravagant person. And I feel like, you know, they might not be as financially savvy as well, but they're very generous. 
They're very generous with their resources, with their time, with their affection. So it's somebody who is very sensual. They like to touch you all the time. They like to, you know, hold your hands, be with you. And they're very um, sensitive to your needs. They are also really smitten by you. So they're trying their hardest to woo you, to court you, to um, dump all these gifts and, and, and trinkets on you. And so, yes, it's making you happy, but they're doing it at the expense of their financial planning. So I feel like this person is doing all these things to kind of win you over. And they're not very responsible with their money, okay? So that's one way I feel where things can be playing out. And I feel like for others of you, this is like a marriage partner who is financially just a little bit irresponsible, frivolous, okay, frivolous. And I also feel there is a little bit of a um, falling out between you and this person. For others, if you're dating, this is a really good person. They're very generous, very loving, and, you know, it's everything that you're hoping for. They're trying their hardest to woo you and to court you, and you really like this person, too. But I feel like it's the material things at the end of the day. They don't really uh, mean anything. So make sure that you have a conversation with them and you tell them, you know, stop. Or are you trying to buy me? Uh, why don't you save that money and take care of yourself? So I feel like there needs to be a conversation here. But I feel many of you are very flattered by the generosity of this person. But to do the right thing, you know, to, to also think about how much money are they really making? Why are they spending so recklessly, so frivolously? And why are they trying to buy my affection? It's crucial for you not only to, you know, take, 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 but to really think about the rationale behind it, okay? And to really think to yourself, this is a one-way street. How is it going to be a sustainable relationship further down the line? So you kind of need to be realistic about addressing this issue. And for others of you, I feel like there is a person here um, a little bit jealous, okay? So that same earth sign, someone who's a little bit jealous, someone who is um, kind of like questioning, you know, are you in love with me? How much do you love me? Are you over your exes? Are you, you know, emotionally available to be with me? So they might not even ask you if you're over your exes, but they might ask you, you know, why are you so distant? How much do you love me? Are you with me for the right reason? So I feel like there is going to be that sense of um, that discourse, um, th that discourse coming through. And a lot of it borders on this person wanting to understand you, wanting to engage with you in an emotional way, and they feel like something is lacking, okay? Um, so that's what I, I feel like. There's, there are important conversations coming in this month between you and your partner, and I feel like the more open the both of you are, and especially the more open you are, the easier it's going to be to resolve things, it's going to be the easier it's going to be to really understand um, the relationship, like, you know, understanding your partner, understanding your relationship and understanding yourself. That's really crucial. So repairing relationships, balancing out relationship, that's going to be um, on the front burner for you guys. Um, there is a last message that is coming in here. In your work situation, I feel like many of you are, it's like whistling while you work. Um, you, you're meeting really, really like-minded people. Try to socialize a little bit more. Somebody's reaching out to you, wanting you to uh, kind of engage with them a little more in the work environment. And I feel, I have a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Someone's really digging you. They like your company. And um, it could be like a, a crush as well. You're very popular in the work environment. People are really receptive towards you. And then I also feel like friends want you to hang out. So whatever their opportunity there is to socialize, to have fun, to, you know, go out and let your hair down, definitely do it, okay? You're going to be very, very happy for this month. Um, easy breezy month. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about is, you know, overspending and, um, 
you know, Gemini's, this is what I'm feeling here for, and, and we're not talking about those of you with, you know, billions of uh, dollars in the bank, okay? We're talking like, you know, the average everyday type of a Gemini people. Um, I feel in general, you guys are not great with money, like um, curbing your spending, budgeting, and, you know, saving, things like that. I, I don't feel that. And I feel what happens is, um, there, I, I do see emotional spending and spending money when you feel like, oh, I've had a really rough day today, so I'm going to reward myself. I'm going to buy a pair of shoes. I'm going to buy some scarves. I'm going to get my nails done, you know, whatever your vice is. Or I'm going to get like this, uh, I'm going to splurge on like a really good steak or, you know, a seafood restaurant, whatever your vice is, whether it's clothes, food, um, material, like whatever it is, um, there is a little bit of overspending. And then when you overspend and you're looking at your checking account or your savings account, you're like, oh no. And you, you become a little bit more worried, right? For an earth sign, their instinct is, okay, I need to freeze all spending. So then they pack their sandwiches for lunch. They stay in on the weekend. They, you know, learn to say no to social engagement. For you guys, on the other hand, it's like you're looking at your bank account and everything, the, the money is dipping really low, right? You get worried and the emotional spending gets worse. So instead of, you know, behaving like an earth sign where you're like, okay, I'm going to freeze all spending and I'm just going to pack my lunch, eat cereal for breakfast, whatever it is where you can decrease your spending, I feel like you might up your spending because you're emotionally uh, rattled. You're a little bit nervous. And when you're nervous, you do spend. So be careful about that, okay? Finding strategies for you guys to budget, setting goals for yourself, setting limits for yourself, being a little bit more harsh with yourself rather than self-indulgent, okay? That's going to be very, very crucial for this month. Um, don't buy impulse items. Sorry, the... Um, video cut off. Um, the last thing that I mentioned was um, don't buy impulse items and especially don't buy big ticket items. It is a Mercury retrograde um, period that we are experiencing right now. So there are a lot of, uh, you know, instances where there will be buyer's remorse. So you want to be a little bit careful, okay? Be careful with your spending overall. I feel like it's a um, very exuberant month, uh, lots of social engagement, lots of new things, new ideas, new interaction with people that will really spark you off uh, ideologically and just, it's an exciting month. It's an exciting time. Um, so that's all I have for you guys. I hope the uh, video is timely. I hope that it is still helpful for you guys. And thank you so much for your patience with me. And thanks for the inquiry, you know, regarding whether or not I'm okay too. I got a lot of that from you guys, um, from your Gem uh, from Gemini viewers and the subscribers. So I really appreciate that. I wish you all the best. Have a blessed, wonderful rest of uh, March 2018. Bye-bye.